Well, lots of farmers, gardeners, and homeowners are hoping for rain as it's been pretty dry around central Illinois this spring. Here to answer your weather-related questions in today's Ask Your Meteorologist, we have meteorologist Jacob Dickey, who has not been working very hard recently. <laughs> never. Not hard never enough, really anyway. Sad. I never do anything. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we're going to put you to work today yeah, because we've good. got some great questions. Um, let's start here with our first one. So we've received several photos of clouds with what... Oh, maybe I wrote that wrong. No, you didn't. You keep what look like rainbows in them? Oh. Yep. <laughs> what is that and how does that occur? Yeah, we get, it's not actually <laughs> rainbows well. here. I just yes. can't read. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a number of different cloud pictures that we've gotten here. And I got some, uh, one from a lady down in Southern Illinois. Uh, she's from, and she was up here visiting. Can you see what I'm talking about there? Yes, that's oh, yeah. cool. How it's like the top of that cloud has some colors splashed across it there. Uh, that's pretty interesting. And it's not a rainbow because there's not rain happening at the time. So we'll zoom out a little bit. You see, it's at the top of the clouds. Very ah. interesting. A uh, second grade classroom over in Danville also sent me a photo. Uh, this was from Mrs. Carlton's second grade. Same thing. It's like, well, what is that? That's not a normal looking rainbow. It's called cloud iridescence. And essentially, what happens is that thin layer of cloud, that thin layer of moisture up high in the atmosphere, it has to be just right. I mean, just right for that. Um, it will basically, the sunlight passes through it and it refracts it. Whether it's ice crystals up there is what it usually is. It refracts it. And if you're at the right spot, then you can see what looks like a rainbow on there. Sometimes they call them rainbow clouds, too, because it's just the top of them illuminated. In order to have that, you can't have big cumulus clouds. you got to have very thin clouds, usually high up there, cirrus clouds. Uh, and they can have ice crystals in there. So pretty interesting to see that. Not every day you see something like that. Yeah. I mean, no. it's got to be just right for that. So it was really cool to get those pictures. Yeah, yeah pretty rare okay. sighting, it sounds like. Okay, we have another question here for you. This past week was a historic anniversary for a major Central Illinois tornado disaster, the Mattoon Charleston tornado of 1917. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, a little history. 1917, uh, May 26th, it was a really horrible tornado. In fact, it was a top five deadliest tornado disaster in Illinois. This was a F4 tornado that went right through the heart of both Mattoon and in Charleston. And uh, these are some photos from the archives way back when. Uh, the devastation was just astounding from it. Uh, over 100 people were killed in those two towns from this tornado. And uh, you, know, you have a violent tornado going through a populated area. Back in 1917, they didn't have Doppler radar. They didn't have sirens. This tornado, uh, you know, you'd see it coming and that's all the time you get if you even saw it coming there. Uh, so a lot of horrible devastation there. I shared a link on my Facebook page from it as well because it's very fascinating to see all of the stories. I mean, I mean, they were talking about straw blown through trees, feathers plucked off of chickens, uh, just horrifying damage. So there's a map. This was from the National Weather Service showing it. Uh, equivalent Matt Tuna would have gone from downtown northward and uh, then in Charleston, it went right through the old downtown Charleston area. Uh, 100 and it was 104, 105 killed, I think, in the tor tornado's path, and it was uh, injuries were in the hundreds there, over 600, 490 in Mattoon alone, 182 in Charleston. So uh, we'll run through those pictures one more time then for you. Notice this picture here. Can you see the bottom left of the screen? Yeah. Wow. That's the railroad tracks there, the very wow. corner. So that gives you an idea. That's from looking north from downtown as that came on through. Okay, we got to get to the drought monitor we because do. a lot of people are wondering what is the latest that that's happening with this drought. Yeah, so uh, as you know, before today, we really haven't had a lot of rain. The last couple of days, been lucky with these spot showers, these whack-a-mole showers. Yeah. yeah, it's like hit and miss here and there. Uh, so this is the drought monitor update for you. Moderate drought conditions now. A big chunk of East Central Illinois now officially declared today in moderate drought. Uh, we're going to have a lot more about this coming up tonight at 5 and 6, what this means. Probably maybe the, the worst time of year for it, especially in such a large area. And we're not alone. Chicago Metro also seeing that and parts of Metro St. Louis also seeing those drought conditions expand. Last year, we had a little bit of a drought localized. It was Champaign and Douglas County was basically ground zero for that. This year, a much more widespread area. And uh, besides those spot showers today, the pattern's still looking dry. So we need more of a widespread, all-day, gentle rain than these hit-and-miss showers. Because today we got folks saying, hey, I got an inch of rain, and the neighbors down the road are getting nothing. Yeah. Okay, well, put a good word in. And maybe we'll we'll get that. Yeah, you'll have to talk to Kevin. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, there's a look at the different ways you can connect with Jacob um, to ask him your weather-related questions, and maybe he'll answer it next week. 